Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with the new topic of what? The unilateral Laplace transform. Now basically I have already told you we, are, we know the basics, we know the introduction to it. But let's say we just wind the things up. So maybe this is the last video of the course as well. Well last in a sense in the sense of topics. This is the last topic of the course. Uh, why? Because in the next video then uh, I will try to do some examples if necessary. I, I, maybe I don't. But if let's say one is for examples, uh, so the next would be examples, right? And then after that I would solve the assignment and then in the next video I would solve the paper. So this one, this video and three more videos, that is it past paper right and then the z transform so uh, the interested students would watch z transform and non interested uh, this would be the end for the signal and systems course anyways let's get into this topic we know uh, the equation x of s integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative st dt this is Laplace transform and this we name as bilateral Laplace transform. Let me in short BLT. Then we had another Laplace transform and not another but if the condition is that we have somewhere from 0 to infinity and let me name it as 0 minus to infinity. If I have x of t exponential of negative st with respect to t this is called the unilateral Laplace transform and let me name it in short UL unilateral Laplace transform ULLT and to differentiate between the two let me write it like this as curved X that is it that's the only difference also this is from a zero to infinity also if you only have the left hand side if you have a negative infinity to zero that is also unilateral Laplace transform bilateral is on both the sides unilateral is on one side of the y-axis that is it zero minus just the value before zero why so you know it very well and you will get it when we move further into the topic if I have a point if x of t is 0 if we have a signal x of t that is 0 for negative values of time so what would be the relation between the bilateral Laplace transform and the unilateral Laplace transform have a look this is existing only from for the positive time and this is existing for both the times but the signal is zero for negative time so this means what this means that the unilateral Laplace transform would be equal to the bilateral Laplace transform isn't it like this it is let's say another point the second point if two signals are differ uh, two signals that differ for two less for t less than zero two signals that differ for two less than zero but are identical For t greater than or equal to 0. Now what would be the case? Now what would be the case? So have a look. They are different for t less than 0. But they are identical for t greater than 0. So. If they are identical for t greater than 0. Then. Then what? The, 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 the Laplace transform that is existing for greater than 0 would be the same for both. So this implies what? That the, that the unilateral Laplace transform is same for both. And the capital, the bilateral Laplace transform is different for both. Why? 
because they are different for negative values of time. This uh, unilateral Laplace transform, we are only talking for the positive values of time. So, this would be the same. Now, don't get confused. Initially, I told you that from negative infinity to zero, it's also unilateral Laplace transform. But over here, the book has not discussed it, so that's why you may get this. So let's say we, we, we remove that negative infinity to zero. We only consider from positive zero, zero to positive infinity. So then you would not get confused in this point. So based on this, can you not comment on the ROC of, of the unilateral Laplace transform? We can. If you see, so this Laplace transform is existing only for the right side, which means it's only existing for the right side the signals, you can say. So which means what? We know from the properties, if the signal is right-sided, if the ROC, if the, the, the Laplace transform, the ROC lies to the right, the right most pole, what does this suggest? The signal is right-sided, the ROC is the right side. So the ROC would always be the right half plane, or you could say it would be right-sided. ROC is the right half plane always for what? For a unilateral Laplace transform. And this is a very, very important point again. Is that clear till here? Properties. The properties, we do not see all of them, but uh, we would only talk about the different. And the difference is in the differentiation property. If you have the bilateral Laplace transform, let's say on this side. So if x of t is a signal that has a Laplace transform x of s, the derivative of x of d would have a Laplace transform s times x of s. The second derivative of x of t would have a Laplace transform s squared times x of s and you go on like this. Whereas, if you talk about the unilateral Laplace transform, so if a signal x of t has the corresponding unilateral Laplace transform as x of s, now the derivative of it, the derivative of the signal with ha will have a Laplace transform as s of x of s minus x of 0 minus or you could say x of 0. This is an initial condition you know from the differential equations and this and that courses initial conditions. This is not the topic to cover in detail over here. Similarly you have a second derivative. The unilateral Laplace transform would be s squared times x of s minus s times x of 0 minus minus x derivative of 0 minus. Isn't it like this? It is. For the third derivative you have an s cube x of s minus s squared of x of 0 minus s times this and that so please check it down in the book I am getting a little confused but in that case the second derivative may also be involved. So this was the difference that I need to talk. Now uh, you know what uh, what is the significance of this unilateral Laplace transform so you could say an important significance is that it is used for causal systems. It is used for causal systems. Why? Because they are also right-sided signals. So you also have the right-sided unilateral Laplace transform. 
so you can write that this main application could be you know uh, 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 causal systems causal systems right now if we talk about the LTI systems that are described by linear constant coefficient differential equations so it is another application of this so if let's say let's say I talk about LTI systems described by linear constant coefficient differential equation so now when would when you are given a linear constant coefficient differential equation when to use the bilateral Laplace transform and when to use the unilateral Laplace transform so we have a certain set of conditions if initially at rest if initial conditions are zero number one if initial conditions are zero which means what in the system is initially at rest if the system is initially at rest what does this mean so this means that till when the input is not applied let's say I say for t less than zero so till that time the output would be zero these are what are the initial conditions initially rest condition is what that if x of t is zero for some values of time uh, y of t is also zero for that values of time so if these are the condition if this is the condition so in that case what do you have in that case you use the bilateral Laplace transform fine similarly if you have non-zero initial conditions if you have number two if you have non-zero initial conditions which mean the system is uh, not initially in rest the case of capacitors or or whatever inductors which means the system is not initially there that is if x of t is zero for some value of time let's say t not t, t less than zero so y of t would not be equal to zero for t less than zero so if the input is zero the output is not zero for that value of time if these are the initial conditions so in that case you use what in that case you use the unilateral laplace transform and i believe it is clear so let's say i remove the board first so that we could have a little more discussion okay so uh, this was what this was the bilateral laplace transform and the unilateral is let's say i write it over here This is your unilateral Laplace transform. Example. The second derivative of y of t plus three times the first derivative plus two times y of t is x of t h of s is unknown y of s is unknown y of t is unknown input is given alpha times u of t step signal and you are also given initial rest conditions Initial rest condition is given. What do you do? 
you use the bilateral Laplace transform. Bilateral Laplace transform. S squared y of s plus 3 times y of s plus 2 times y of s is x of s. y of s into s squared plus 3s plus 2 is x of s. And you have got this. h of s you have got. h of s is y of s upon x of s and this is equal to 1 upon s squared plus 3s plus 2 and you can further split it as s plus 1 into s plus 2. s plus 1 into s plus 2. You have got your h of s. How do you get your y of s? y of s is h of s into x of s, right? So y of s is h of s into x of s. So this would come out to be an alpha divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2. So y of s is also uh, uh, done. For y of t, what do you do? You take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So let's say I make it simple. x of t is u of t, right? So what do you have? This would come out to be 1. So have a look. Can I not write it? Uh, uh, you split it by partial fractions as s plus 1 plus b times x plus 2. What do you get? You get a y of s is equal to, so you can solve it by yourself, you get a 1 and minus 1. So 1 upon s plus 1 and then a minus 1 upon s plus 2. So you take the output, you take the what? You take the corresponding in, what? inverse. So this is 1, this is 2 exponential of negative a t u of t minus exponential of negative 2 t u of t and that is it that is it okay so uh, you know i made a mistake i made a mistake and you did not tell me you did not tell me and what was that mistake the the unit the laplace transform of a step signal is 1 over s over here have a look i did not mention that 1 over s when i was multiplying h of s with x of s so this x of s i did not mention that is s fine so which means this particular thing comes out to be wrong and and after this this calculations comes out to be wrong so uh, you know you can find out your y of t by yourself let it be your homework and let me know in the comment section uh, and, and how do you do this? So of course, you do this by a partial fraction expansion method. Fine. Now, this was a system where we had initial rest conditions. Fine. Now, let us consider a system where some initial conditions are given. Which means we have some system initial conditions. And let's say what are they? Let's say y of 0 is beta and y derivative of 0 is gamma fine so so have a look if you have non-zero initial conditions so what do you do you take the unilateral laplace transform so have a look the second derivative so s squared y of s right minus s times y of zero and minus y derivative of zero isn't it like this so you please cross check this okay and then you have plus three times you have the first derivative so you have an s times y of s minus y of 0 minus right and then you have a plus 2 times y of t so plus 2 times y of s and this would be equal to x of s so have a look you can do it again in the very same manner you have a, a y of s you have x of s y of s by x of s will give you h of s then h of s multiplied x of s will give you y of s and then the inverse of that would give you y of t and that is it similarly if you need to find h of t so you can have h of s is inverse fine and if you want to find x of t, so basically you know that very well. Anyways, let's say I rearrange it for, for, for y of s. Let's say I rearrange it for y of s. I need y of s, let's say. So my y of s, uh, let me, you know, uh, copy it directly from over here. Where is it? So just give me a second. Yes. So we have a beta into s plus 3. Beta into s plus 3 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2. Plus gamma divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2. And plus 1 upon plus alpha 
प्लस एल्फा डिवाइड बाय एस इंटू एस प्लस वन इंटू एस प्लस टू फाइन so where this alpha come from so this was basically over here which i which i skipped over here for for the simplicity purpose let's say it is over here anyways anyway so this is the final y of s so let me tell you do not confuse uh, you know the values of alpha beta and gamma why because when you're given a, a a proper example a proper question so you would have proper values for alpha beta and gamma fine so do not need to confuse it over here over here now they have put uh, the corresponding values of alpha beta and similarly for x of s they have put alpha by s so this is what you get the final output now have a look this black term isn't it the same term as this one so which means we have some part in the uh, unilateral laplace transform which is equal to the bilateral laplace transform and that is called the zero state response that is called the zero state response and this is the term which corresponds to the zero initial conditions which corresponds to the zero initial conditions whereas the term that corresponds to non zero initial conditions which were which was not previously present over here but is now present for the uh, for the uh, non zero initial conditions these are these two terms and they are called as the zero input response and that is it so let the zero input response be the last word of this course in the theory part by the way this course is not finished yet it is finished 100% but i would do more than 100 right in the next video i will solve an example after that i'll solve an assignment after that i'll solve the past paper so three more videos to come for you guys next i will take a break because i would be busy in my papers and then i will come back with the z transform so anyways that is it for this video and let me tell you a mishap happened when i was editing the video i recorded it early in the morning now when i was editing it so uh, this part got deleted the the one that i recorded the last two, three four minutes got deleted right i stood up again started recording it again when i finished i saw that i had not turned on the mic the mic was off no audio so I recorded this for the third time, the last four or five minutes. So anyway, anyway, this was just to tell you. That is it for this video. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.